Sex sent them to the ER. For this, I needed a consultation from my good friend, Dr. Rena Malik. Welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for having me. Are you excited to watch the show? I'm so excited. And I've heard you watched a couple episodes. I watched one, yeah. Be woo, be woo. It looks like your penis has sustained major trauma. What is all of this? It was a, was a, like a chastity, chastity belt. belt. <laughs> ah. Wearing a medieval torture device is probably not most people's idea of a good time. But this man had been unfaithful before, so this couple thought it was necessary. I've not seen a patient who's been forced to wear one because they've been unfaithful. That's yeah, that's a, that's a punishment as opposed, I mean, maybe they want the punishment, so like S&M, you gotta be yeah. open to that adult yeah. play. After love making, this couple went through their bizarre ritual, and she'd take the key and lock them up until they meet again. The bit that hurts, the part to make it work, my favorite part. Wow. I'm the only one with the key to your, what would happen if you were to get an erection trapped inside of a plastic case? It would hurt. It would hurt, and you could possibly damage your penis, right? If the right. erection was bent in a different way, mm -hmm. you could create micro tears in the penis, which over time could cause problems with erectile function. Oh my gosh, my necklace, the key, I've lost it. You what? Oh, oh my God. Mitch. You're gonna break me free. Whoa. Brace yourself. Oh no. <laughs> You know, we do see things get stuck on penises in the, yeah. in, you know, all the time. Sure. Uh, people will use different things as cock rings mm -hmm. and then they'll fall asleep, they'll, uh, they'll be intoxicated, mm -hmm. or they will have an erection and then it gets swollen and then it gets stuck. You have to use all sorts of different things, like jiggly saws to cut them off, mm -hmm. but not a hammer. Fortunately, it looks like just abrasions and contusions. There's no role here for an ultrasound to check for hematomas, like I feel like. Well, so you can get an MRI to make okay. sure there's no fracture, but ultimately if there's just hematomas or, you know, essentially blood clots or, you know, blood forming underneath the foreskin, there's really nothing you need to do mm. but wait for, for okay. some time. Please just get these things out of me! Okay, things? Get what out of you? The rocks, okay, the rocks! Hey, let's use the pop rocks. Candy rock. Are those the pop? I was gonna say that, but then I was like, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, 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 no. Raging yeast oh, infection. Here and here, they're burning. Okay. Oh, it hurts. Well, there's lots of swelling and irritation. Use toys or devices, aids that are used, that are meant for sexual purposes. They have, you know, flavored lube, flavored condoms. Make sure you try them on your skin before you try them down there to make sure you're not having an allergic reaction or something. But these, some of these things can put you at higher risk for yeast infections like you talked about. But I better put it somewhere else. I wonder what it'd feel like down there. I tell her, you know, this isn't a good idea, probably shouldn't be doing this. Sugar is not meant to be in that area. Yeah, but generally speaking, you yeah. know, you want to keep sticky, icky things away from the genitals. Good point. After the popsicle melted, this couple went to heat things up in the bedroom. She was squirming around quite a bit more than normal, so I kind of figured something was wrong. There was some tenderness or something. Oh, yeah. So I was hoping it was just an infection. An infection that quickly is unreasonable. I really don't want to tell the story. So I was really vague with the doctor. And we were using, you know, sort of a sex toy. This is so common. I'll just tell you that people yeah. never want to say exactly what they were doing. Very often they were like minding their own business or something else or, you know, they, they make up a story because they're super embarrassed. What's the is... wildest story you've ever heard? Like, now wildest, like, the worst example where it's obviously unbelievable. Well, so there was a guy who uh, was uh, cheating on his wife. Okay. And he came in for a penile fracture, which is where you, um, if you have vigorous intercourse and you break the penis essentially, and you have to, that's a surgical emergency. So he came in, he told his wife he was masturbating in the car, and that's how it happened. <laughs> popsicle, okay? It was a popsicle. That's what we used as a sex toy. And after a while, I just got numb to it. You definitely gave yourself cold paniculitis. That's a quick diagnosis. Of yeah. Cold I, paniculitis. Cold paniculitis in my head is like kind of like frostbite. Is that yeah, reasonable? Yeah, I think so. I think that's reasonable. I mean, it's basically exposure to cold that leads to an eruption of the skin, mm -hmm. causing you know kind of a rash-like syndrome. Should clear up in a few days. We'll get you some ointment to take care of the inflammation. I'm assuming they're going to throw some corticosteroid on that. Probably. <laughs> you know what we learn in, in med school? It's when it's dry, uh, make it wet. When it's yeah. wet, make it dry. Yeah. A pops is not a sex toy. Just like how we say if you're icing an injured area, mm -hmm. you don't apply the ice directly to the skin because you could damage the skin. Right. That's what, essentially you're burning your skin with ice. Absolutely. Which is counterintuitive, right? Yeah. Burning with ice. Yeah. My husband has a problem with his private parts. 
It's my penis. It's all red and swollen. <laughs> Why, when we talk about our bodies, we get so uncomfortable? What is what? That happens often. Oh, and I think it starts when we're young, right? Yeah. If your parents don't teach you the right words for vagina and penis, yeah. you know, you're like my hoo ha, my this, sure. my, you know, and it, it becomes like an embarrassing thing, and it's part of culture. That penis look like a kibasa with speed bumps. These bumps on your penis, are they some kind of beads? He said, those are glass beads that have been implanted in the skin of my penis. We like his penis the way it is. That's all you need to know. People have injected many things into their penis, right? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a big population in prisons that does a lot of injecting of fillers and really? actually these beads, wow. it's penis pearling, I believe it's called. They, um, it started in, in Asia with this, okay. this, uh, this crime syndicate. I think it's called, I can't remember the name. For every year they were in prison, they would insert another Pearl. They weren't doing it as a punishment. It was like a positive thing? Correct. To show like how wow. manly they are. Just use a ribbed condom. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> like the, it's the same, same thing. thing right? right. The infection could spread and you could lose a lot more than just the bead. It could be fatal. Get it out, please. So the procedure that we use is we numb the area, then I make a small incision, in this case over the bead, and then pop the bead out. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay, we're done. You did great. And then you leave the rest of the beads in there? Well, if they're not infected, in theory, you could leave them in there. I saw a man's genitals swollen and slightly bluish discolored. Oh. At the base of them was this large steel ring. Ring on the testicles? Baby, you look terrible. This is all my fault. Oh, hello. Hi. These How can a man's nice. girlfriend bringing home a new accessory from a sex toy uh, party be a bad thing? I don't think that's going to fit around me. It doesn't go around just that. It goes around oh. everything. Some people get pleasure from perineal stimulation, mm. right? So when you're tugging on it, the erectile bodies of the penis go down into the perineum. Mm. But whenever you're using rings, you want to use ones that are silicone that can stretch really easily or have some sort of release valve. Otherwise, you'll end up in a situation a like this. I can't get it off. Oh my God, Danny. I see oh, go to the ER. Dan, looks like the only way we're going to be able to get this ring off is by cutting it off. What kind of saw you, you said earlier? A jiggly saw. What's a jiggly? <laughs> I never thought I'd ask that. What's a jiggly? You know, I don't really know what it is. We just know that's what we have to call for. <laughs> okay, good. And it. sometimes we have to call the fire department if the wow. ER doesn't have one. But then they bring that giant thing? Yeah. This ring was bigger and thicker than most of the rings that I've seen before. But I figured, well, let me see if we can cut through that. Yeah, yeah I've scary. used one of those before, And too. then I, I feel like you could put, like, a a piece of metal to protect yes. the Yes, so you can get like a small malleable blade from the OR and mm -hmm. put it underneath so that it hits that yeah. instead. We're gonna need a bigger tool. Oh, here it's you go! Yeah. <laughs> they called the fire department. Why are they holding him like he's gonna jump? Hold him still, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was frankly a little worried, you know, could I pull this off? Go, ready? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and the ring is off. That was a scary way of doing it. This man had a really close scary. call, so here's some advice for you ladies, too. Just because you like it doesn't mean you should put a ring on it. She seemed to be having this fantastic orgasm. It was as though we were still having sex, even though we had stopped for uh, some minutes. This. It's almost 8.30, the meter maids are coming soon. You gotta move your car. And it won't stop. <laughs> what? Are you still having an orgasm? Yes. So I don't know about having long orgasms. Certainly usually don't last this long, but you can have persistent genital arousal disorder, which is a rare condition that happens in mostly women where they have persistent feelings of arousal mm. and the same changes that happen in your body when you're aroused and having orgasms like blood flow to the area and t sometimes sensitivity can continue to occur. It can be very distressing and actually uncomfortable. It's not like a pleasurable scenario. Coming in the door in a full orgasm. Let's give her some diazepam, all right? And run those tests. So they went to a dispensary to try and get the Valium, and while they were still writing up the paperwork, I stopped. That's gotta be traumatizing if the next time you have sex, you're like, whoa, what if that happens again? Yeah, and usually, so with these patients who have it persistently not in this short period, it can be like extremely distressing, and up to 54% of people like say they'll have suicidal ideation. I mean, wow. it's really serious. Okay, yeah. It got to the point where I could just be like, 
doing whatever, watching TV, walking down the street, and I could have an orgasm out of the blue. I would have as many as 12 spontaneous prolonged orgasms in one day. At the end of the day, after a lot of research was done, they finally determined that I'm bipolar, and they had to switch me from antidepressants to bipolar meds. So I guess this was like the mania component of the bipolar? I think it was probably PGAD, or persistent genital arousal syndrome, mm -hmm. or disorder. And again, they can be treated with antipsychotics. Mm -hmm. So maybe she had other emotional yeah, symptoms exactly. as well, but I think yeah, that was... Yeah, I don't think you could make a diagnosis of a bipolar disorder off of just that one symptom. Alone. Right. So there had to be right. other things that they're yeah. not sharing. Right. I have a very happy sex life and that's a really great feeling. Well, that's great, because I worry that by taking medications, could you hurt your sex life? Could there be sexual dysfunction as a result of the medicine? Yeah, so SSRIs have side effects of low libido very commonly. If you do develop low libido on these medications, they can either change medications or add medications to help with libido. So if you're suffering from that, talk to your psychiatrist or doctor, whoever's prescribing it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, baby. He gave her a look at one point, which said to me, apparently there was something more going on. The vacuum hose was attached to his penis and his left oh. testicle was trapped inside. We use vacuum erection devices for men with erectile mm -hmm. dysfunction, but they're a controlled yeah. suction, right? So in this case, you know, it's uncontrolled suction. When I examine his genital region, I see swelling and bruising. The scrotal sac could be compromised, and of course, the penis could be suffering injury as well. I begin cutting the vacuum hose with the saw. Did he need to bring this, like... Why is there sparks? It's not metal. Everyone heaves a great sigh of relief, but our celebration is short-lived. It's clear that his genitals are swollen, they're bruised, they really look to be in poor shape. If you have something that's on there for a significant period of time, yeah, it's gonna constrict and constrict, and then it's gonna cause swelling beyond the constriction, and then it will just start getting bigger and bigger. And over time, yes, you can cause blood flow to decrease to the penis, so you wanna get it taken care of as quickly Urgent. as possible. Because of the size of the hematoseal, which is a collection of blood, it was very likely that the circulation to the testicle was compromised. Is that bad? Yes, Surgical you emergency immediately or else. Doors open, in come the paramedics with this lady. Can you open your eyes? Let's get her to this bed. Nonverbal, pale, she's in shock. She needs immediate intervention. Can you tell me exactly what happened? You know, my papa dying has, has been really stressful on everyone. This had occurred after the death of a family member. At the wake, they snuck off for some alone time. Thoreau. Seriously, what are you doing? I'm ovulating. When this husband wasn't able to perform, they broke into grandpa's prescription stash. Who has funerals in their own homes? I, I don't know. At the person who's deceased home and especially. Like, I know she's ovulating, but she's gonna be ovulating like, for tonight. a couple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. doesn't have to happen during the funeral. And also, perfectly acceptable to not be in a sexual mood Absolutely. at a funeral. Absolutely, Like I think that's a big thing in, in men's sexual health, mm -hmm. right? It's okay that you are not always ready to perform, and I think that adds so much anxiety and so much stress for men when women are like, well, why can't you? What I've seen pattern-wise emerge is uh, my female patients try to always look physically perfect to um, their friends and family members. Mm -hmm. The male patients always try and be mentally perfect. Yeah. So they might not smell great, but they always have to be tough right. and strong and aggressive. Hey, what's this? Nitro paste. I would open up. How do they know physiology so well <laughs> that they're like, we know how nitro paste works? I don't know, they're like, let's put this on your penis. Like, what? <laughs> Grandpa's heart medication. <laughs> Gets the blood flowing, right? Let's try it. Wow. Whoa. That worked better than I expected. Whoa. Would that work? Like, I, I don't even know if that's like a treatment. Anything that increases nitric oxide will increase blood flow to the penis and then cause an erection. So potentially, yes, do not recommend. <laughs> okay, fair. Sam? Oh my God, Sam, what's the matter? So she's basically experiencing systemic effects of right. the nitro where she's vasodilating so much so that it's dropping her blood pressure. But I'm surprised so. he's not. Because yeah. nitro paste is meant to be absorbed topically, yeah. so why is he not getting any symptoms that she yeah. is? And that's the last thing I remember. <laughs> Dude, you had sex in Papu's house and used his medicine at his wake? That's crazy! How is this show on the <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you to Dr. Malik for coming over. Check out her channel, and if you want to see some more TLC shows, click here. As always, stay happy and healthy.